difficulties faced by ordinary Cairo residents as they're hearing this gunfire breaking out. They've never seen anything like it. Um, Mona Saif is an activist um, in Tahrir Square, or Liberation Square, as it translates to in English. She's an activist. She's been on the phone to us already um, previously. Thank you very much for sparing the time, for taking the risk um, to speak to us. It sounds really dangerous. Why are you still there? Because we can't go. We've lost a lot of people and we've lost them for a cause. The cause is that we wanted Mubarak to be out. We can't just... We owe it to them to stick it till the end. We have many injured people. It would be very hard to move them. And we know, everyone in this square knows, if we decided to give in now, they will hunt us one by one. We've been through this. We know it. Can you tell us what happened? I know it's difficult um, and it's difficult to see, but can you confirm that live gunfire was shot into crowds of unarmed civilians? Yes, yes, yes. They are shooting. There are people, there are some of the thugs with uh, rifles on, on the bridge and they shot at the, our demonstrators. Every couple of minutes you find the ambulance coming, carrying wounded, and every now and then you find them carrying someone dead. People were just playing over one, uh, like the latest of our dead protesters, he was shot right through the head. I had two friends watching this happen. I just don't understand uh, what more does the world need to just kick Mubarak out of this country. We have heard that four people now have been killed and 13 wounded in the violence um, that's been happening for the last 12 hours. Um, what are you concerned about now? You sound like there's a desperate need for medical help, expertise for those people who are injured. Have you been getting any? We did hear ambulances before. Yes, yes, we, uh, the ambulance is here, which is a good thing. The ambulance are constantly here, but I don't understand. The army is right where all the confrontation is happening. They can stop this. They can stop the bloodshed. Why do we have to lose people? Why is this process get, getting repeated over and over again and nobody is stopping this? This has changed so much in the last 12 hours with all this gunfire. Do you remember, is it, it must seem like ages ago, the, the festivity, the, the celebrations that you had when there was a sense of the barrier of fear having fallen so that um, demonstrators were going out into the square. Now, this live gunfire into the crowds, the army standing by. What are you thinking about how things progress from here? I can't, I can't believe it's the same thing. Yesterday, I caught, my brother was away abroad. I called him chanting very happily about how this is a great day and how it's very festive. He, he flew back here to be part of this, and now he came and I am here, and it's really a battlefield. It's really a battlefield. Gunshots do not stop. People do not stop going to face the thugs. The thugs do not stop firing at us. Wounded people are constantly carried away. It's a battle, and I can't believe this is happening in the middle of Cairo, and no one is moving, no one is stopping this. There are many, many viewers around the world watching Al Jazeera now, listening to what you're saying. We've seen um, traffic uh, on our website going up uh, 2,500 percent. So people are listening. People are interested in what's happening. Then why Mona. is Mubarak still there? If people are listening and if, if everyone is concerned, why is Mubarak still there? And we are losing other people every minute, with every minute that passes by. Why is he still there? Mona, I can't answer your question. Um, I wish I could. Can you tell us what your message would be to the people who are watching and listening with the gunfire going off behind you? We are not leaving this place till Mubarak leaves. So there are only two options for the whole world to do. Either they stick, either they stick to Mubarak and his regime, and you lose thousands of people in this square, and it does not definitely become the liberation square, it becomes the massacre square, or whatever they want to call it, or they put an end to Mubarak regime and give these people, the remaining people here, a chance at living a, a, a good life. Oh gosh, the heavy gun fire just keeps ringing out behind you. I, I can't imagine the feelings going through you as you are hearing that and talking to us with um, very courageous words. Are, are you able to take cover? Is there somewhere for you to yes, hide? Yes, 
Yes, the, the middle of the square is really safe. It's very safe. A lot of people are there and it's really safe. Like you can go and sleep there and nothing would happen. But this is happening because we have a lot of people sacrificing their life at the front line next to the museum. So those people there are in extreme danger. Are, are, can you tell us about the people who are around you, what they're saying, what kind of people they are? We've been hearing constantly that there are women and children. Yes, a lot of them are teenage kids and they are like hardly, hard, very few of them are really older than 25 and, and they are really in a fighting spirit and a resilient spirit and it's very astonishing but it really is sad because you know you can avoid this and they don't have to waste their lives over this and you see them going and marching to it very bravely. In the last few minutes, we've heard that the U.S. top diplomat, Hillary Clinton, has said that these um, clashes are shocking, and she spoke to the vice president, Omar Suleiman. Is this, to you, any more reassuring? <laughs> Not really, because... This is the same Hillary Clinton that a week ago, while we were getting hit, was assuring the world and Mubarak that his country is stable. So, no, it really isn't reassuring. What would be assuring for me is to hear that Mubarak is about to give an urgent speech to his people now and say he is leaving. Mona, thank you very yes. much. Mona Saif, thank you for telling us, for telling the world what it's like to be there, surrounded by gunfire, live gunfire being shot into crowds of demonstrators. I just want to recap for viewers where things stand at the moment in Egypt as we enter day 10 of the standoff. At